everyone, I am Shabina Hakeem, your teacher for the day. Today we are going to discuss an important topic, maps. And in this chapter, we will be learning about globes, maps, types of maps, essentials of maps, sketch and a plan. So children, we will begin with the globes. And what is a globe? It is a three-dimensional representation of the earth. It is an exact model of the earth. It shows us the exact nature of the earth, spherical, bulging in the center and flattened at the poles, north pole and south pole. This earth shows us the distribution of the continents as well as the oceans on the earth. It is easy to understand how these continents and oceans are distributed on the surface of the earth. But it has its disadvantage also. We cannot show all the minor details on a globe. We cannot show the population, agriculture, mineral distribution, etc. of an area on a globe. So it is also easy to show the major things, but minor things cannot be shown. It is difficult to carry and difficult to handle also. So to overcome this thing, what we have done, we have come out with maps. And these maps, as you can see, it is the representation of the whole earth or a part of earth on a flat sheet of paper. Children, you can see we have various details of a particular area, like we have a map of India over here. We can show the different states and union territories. So, here we can show the minor details also. Like we can show various maps of your area, your neighborhood, your mohalla, where we can show the various details. So, here we have one major shortcoming also. And that is, we cannot show the curved nature of the earth on a flat sheet of paper the sizes, the shapes, they get distorted over here to a greater extent. Still it has much benefits because we can make various maps for various purposes also. So these maps have been made by some persons and those people who make this map, they are known as cartographers. And this is a science, it's an art of making maps and this art, the science of making maps, we call it as cartography. And the cartographers, they use a specific technique, a specific thing by which they can transfer the circular nature or the curved nature of the earth on a flat sheet of paper and that method we call as a map projection. So children, now we have understood that we have maps we have globes. So now we'll come up to the types of maps. When we talk of the maps, they are very essential in making us understand various features of the earth. So according to the scale, we are having two types of maps, small scale and large scale map. Small scale maps are those maps which show a large area with less details, like we have this world map. On this map, we are showing the whole world, but with less details. We cannot show the road network here. We cannot show the smaller towns over here. But on the other hand, we are having the large scale map. Like we can show a small area, like your mohalla, with minor details. In that map of your mohalla or your district, we can show the various particular landmarks also. We can show the schools, we can show the hospitals also. So it makes us clear about our area. So according to the purpose, we can make various maps because we have various purposes to show on a map. So according to purpose, we can make and draw various maps like we have a political map over here. This map shows us the various political or administrative boundaries of our country. 
Here you can see the various states and these boundaries are being differentiated with the help of different types of lines. So children, another type of map which we are having is a physical map. In this map you can see the various physical features or landforms like mountains, rivers, plateaus, etc. with the help of different shades or different colors. These different colors make us understand the things very much clearly. So, according to purpose, we can have more maps like here we are having a climatic map. This map is showing the annual rainfall. So, what is a climatic map? It can show us the various features of weather like the temperature, rainfall, the humidity of a particular area and in this map you can see the annual rainfall of India. So children moving on we have other types of maps like we have a tourist map over here. This is also a map based on a specific purpose. This we have made for highlighting the tourist places and this map is used for the tourist. Why? Because in this map you can see the various parks, the museums, the beaches, the heritage monuments which are of tourist interest. And children one more map I would like to show you and that is a thematic map. What do we mean by a thematic map? It is that map which shows us various themes like we can show population distribution, we can show forest cover, we can show the distribution of minerals and various other things. So in this map you can see the forest cover of India. So children these maps which I have shown which you have gone through these are of great purpose, these are of great use. So after reading these maps we can have a quick thinking about the uses of maps. So why is map of use? What are the uses of maps? You might be wondering and some of you might be thinking about the uses also. So let's sum up the uses. So maps they are useful for the students, they are useful for a common man. How are they useful for the students? These maps are useful for the students because you can read about various things from the map. You can understand as I said with the help of colors, with the help of different shades, you can differentiate between the places. So that would be of great help to you. And for a common man also, we can just have a look on an area with the help of maps and with the identification of things it becomes easier and clear which location we are seeing. Secondly, these maps they show us the accurate details. Like I said when you see the map of your district you can see the road network also, you can see the important landmarks also and you can see the various amenities like your hospitals, like your schools like your basic things you can see them, you can understand them and whenever you have to go to a place that would be of great help. So and these maps they are also helpful for the sailors, for the drivers, for the pilots, for the navy person also right and engineers, constructors. Why? You might have seen the people who come for the surveys, different types of surveys and what do they do there? they have a base map and with the help of that base map it becomes easier for them to take the household survey. Why? Because they know through which lane they have to enter, where they have to go and which will be the next house that becomes easier for them. So it is much useful. So children there are many uses of map and for making it convenient for us we have made a book of maps that's called atlas and this atlas is helpful for the students. Many of you might be having this with you also at your homes. Why do we use this atlas? This atlas provides us ready information of collected maps. We have various maps in that and they are bound together and they help us in our studies also. So children we have various types of maps and I hope you have got idea about the various types of maps which we are using in our daily life 
in every field we require maps because without a base map you can never understand what we are going to do next dear children we have discussed about various types of maps so now we will discuss about how to read a map how will you read a map when i'll show you a map how are you going to understand what it is showing so for that matter we have certain things certain features by which we can read a map that is called essentials features of a map they are the basic essential feature of a map by which we can read and understand a map so the first one is title children here you can see a map of india showing states and union territories the title the main thing that is written on the top thing is the title that is india states and union territories what is the purpose of this title it shows us what the map is about here in this case it is the map of india it is showing the country of india with its political boundaries like here it is showing the various states and union territories we can show various maps in this way like we can show agriculture we can show the mineral distribution we can show the population so the title of the map makes us understand about what information is being given in the particular map this title makes us easy to understand because when looking at the title you will come to know what the map is about the second thing which we are having is a scale what is a scale have you ever imagined if we would show the whole thing on a paper can we show it can we draw it no why because the real thing is so big we cannot transfer the real thing on a small sheet of paper so what do we do we equate the things we make a ratio so the scale it is a ratio of showing the distance of a map and the actual distance on the ground we equate it we make the distance smaller by creating an equation so we say a scale is a ratio between the distance on the map and the actual distance on the ground we can show these scales in three different ways like we show it with a verbal scale here you can see the verbal scale it's written 1 inch to 4 miles or 1 inch equals 4 miles it means that the 1 inch on our map is equal to 4 miles of the ground so there is an equation by making this equation we are able to transfer the real thing on our paper the second thing is the representative fraction we can show our scale with the help of fraction also like here it is shown 1 is to 2 lakh 50 thousand or 1 by 2 lakh 50 thousand it means that one unit on the map equals to 2 lakh 50 thousand units of the same distance on the ground this is another way of showing a scale in fractions where we don't use the units of measurement but both the things the numerator as well as the denominator are in the same units of measurement so children let's have a look on the third type we have the third type that is the linear scale here you can see a line drawn and divided and subdivided into various parts here what we do the line is drawn proportionately according to the distance what we are showing and then it is divided and subdivided proportionately this also gives us the difference or the idea about the comparison between the distance on the map and the distance on the ground so children this was the second important thing which helps us to understand the map to see the accuracy of the map that how much accurate the things on the ground and the map are so the third important thing is direction 
So what do we mean by direction? Direction is the most important thing. When you don't know the directions, you cannot go anywhere. Because whenever we start our day, we see we have to go this way or that way. There comes the directions. So how to show them on a map? What we do is we draw a line on the top corner and on that line we have written N. You can see over here, this is called a north line. This shows us which direction is north. When we have written or when we know the north direction, the other directions, they become easy to locate. These are the four main directions that is north, south, east and west. And when you know one direction, that is the north direction, we can easily locate the other three directions. We also need intermediate directions. That means the directions in between these four main directions. And these directions are called as intermediate directions. These directions are northeast, northwest, southeast and southwest. What is the fun of these directions? We can clearly locate various places, objects, things in our surroundings with the help of these directions. So another important feature which we are going to discuss is a legend. Children, just imagine if we will show a school building, a hospital, a shopping mall exactly on a map. Can we see the basic things? How can the things be located? So in order to avoid such a mess, what we do, we use certain signs and symbols over there. We even use various colors and these signs and symbols, we call them as the conventional signs and symbols. Conventional means that they are universally accepted. In one region also and in the other region also, people can understand the same thing. Like example I'll give you, like we show a cross. What does it mean? It means things related to the medicine. Like we can have an hospital, we can have a dispensary, we can even have a medical shop. So such um, conventional signs are shown on a map to make it understandable, to make it readable and not to create a mess. So you can see various signs and symbols which we are using over here and these signs and symbols are used to show the landmarks, the important towns, the cities, schools, hospitals, whichever thing you are showing. You can also show the various forests. By using the various shades, you can show the forest cover. You can show the depth of the seas. So various things can be shown over here with the help of this. Now we have shown these things on a map. We have shown these signs, but who will understand what is being shown? How will you understand? How will a layman understand? To make them understand what we are doing, we are making a key or a legend. And the key or legend, it is a reference to the things which we are using, to the signs, the symbols, whatever we have used on the maps. This key or legend is a reference to that. And this gives them the clear understanding what is shown on a map. So children, these are the important essentials of a map and if we lose any one of them, we cannot call it a complete map because a map is complete only when all these essentials, title, scale, directions, legend are over there. Without it, we cannot understand the map and we cannot call it a map. Perfection will not be there. So to be perfect, to make a map, we need all these things to understand a map. So children, after understanding a map, we have other drawing sketches also. One thing we call as a sketch. So what is a sketch? It is a rough drawing. I'll make you understand by giving an example. If you want to invite your friend to your house, what will you do? You will show him the directions roughly. Here is the landmark. Here is my home. Then comes a post office. Then comes a dispensary. Then you have to turn right, then move further, turn left. So that is, you are showing a sketch. That is a sketch. You are not showing him perfectly. 
you are not showing him the measurements of the thing but what you are doing you are showing him you are giving him an idea from where he has to come where he has to turn right then he has to turn left you will make him understand and that type type of a drawing which you are showing over here with the help of these uh, necessary landmarks we call it a sketch this sketch does not use a scale this sketch does not use conventional signs and symbols so it's simply we call it a rough drawing or a rough identification of the things roughly you are explaining anybody what where and what to do where to reach how to reach to your destinations apart from this we have another thing which is being used by the engineers by the constructors what do they do before making a building or a house or a big structure what do they do they make a drawing of that or a layout of that building or a structure on a paper where they use exact measurements also like many of you might have seen while constructing your homes we have an architect who makes a layout how many rooms the dimensions of the rooms are set the places of window your cupboards everything has been set that type of a thing which we draw according to scale according to the measurements we call it as a plan this plan is important why because when we have a particular set of dimensions and all we can make the things come to reality so children we have another thing which is being used by the constructors or engineers and that thing we call as a plan a plan what do these people do before making a building or a structure they make a layout or a sketch of that building you might have seen at your homes also before making a new home what you do an architect is there he draws a layout of how many rooms you are making your lobby your balcony your rooms your windows your cupboards so what is that he makes you understand about the sizes the dimensions of a place so this plan makes us understand what the real thing would be like so this plan is helpful in having an imaginary thing that how the thing would look in real sense so this is another type of drawing which we do apart from the maps apart from the sketch so children we have learned about many things today so we will do a quick recap of what we have learned in this chapter today we have learned about the globes a globe which is a three dimensional model of the earth it represents the earth in its exact shape we have also learned about the maps a map it is a representation of the whole earth or a part of it on a flat sheet of paper so we have also learned about various types of map depending upon the scale as well as depending upon the purpose and these maps are helpful for us in each and every field we have also discussed about the various essential features of maps these essential features are helpful in reading the maps and another thing which we discussed was a sketch and a plan so children hope you enjoyed learning this chapter that's all for today thank you mm -hmm.